If you told me 15 years ago that I needed to talk about it, I would have laughed you out of the room. You're so lucky. If you're a party every day, it becomes boring, especially if it's a party. I've seen it a lot. Well, I don't believe you, Gary. I'm like, because you don't know me. Oh, my boss is me. Quit. Well, I can't. I have bills to pay, Gary. It's poking, and so people don't want it. It's fine. Yet, it's life changing. 2018. 2018. When you were coming to the expo in Sharjah. Yes, I remember. Know, when we were organizing the event, for some reason I went back because I normally don't DM people and actually I don't follow anyone. So you're the only person I follow. I'm very flattered. Starting my own business, you know, in your content. Like you probably hear from everybody, just change my life. And um, when I met you, you signed my book, Crushing It. And I told you that I'll see you in three years. It's been probably five now. Good for you. I'm so happy to I'm proud of you. Here. It's amazing. Yeah. Good for you. And um, I love that content. Which I never get an answer. Being the CEO of your company, which is what I've been battling through. Which both are amazing. Yeah, I think but it's I, a game of what are you built for. Yeah. Self-awareness. Yeah. Absolutely. It's all self-awareness. Accountability. is huge. It was a change of my life when I saw content about accountability. A hundred percent. So wonderful to hear you say that. I am fascinated by how people respond to when I talk about accountability. Mm. It's poking and so people don't want it, yet it's yeah. everything. It will yeah. do so much for people. It's life changing and right now the world is going the other way. Absolutely. It's telling you what every single thing is bad and everything, social media, traditional media, politics, society is pushing everyone to see the thing they should blame for their unhappiness and the second you go to accountability, all your happiness starts to build. Everybody gets a little bit lonely sometimes. Just of course. Just, you know, of shut course. everybody out. Yeah, but the problem is I'd rather be lonely with Absolutely. myself and accountability yep. than to have people around me that are pushing non-accountability. Yep. Having circles of energy that are pushing non-accountability, all those friends, the yep. Media, your feed, your friends who are pushing blame and envy and jealousy. I'd rather be by myself in accountability. Amazing things about your content. It's just always evolving. Yes. Always on point. Yeah, to me it's like as I go through my journey, you know, you go around the world, you have conversations. I'm always paying attention. I spend my time listening and then I'm able to talk. That's why I like Q&A. That's why I like reading my messages because it enables me to know what to talk about. If you told me 15 years ago that I needed to talk about accountability, I would have laughed you out of the room. I would say, why? Everyone knows that's real. I could have never anticipated the world being so effective of eliminating accountability. What's interesting is just about the evolution of you know, your career. Yes. You know, from where you started to where you are right now. At what point do you find most exciting or do you think that's yet to come? When I'm all wrapped up, I'll make that decision. But what's cool is I'm really have genuinely enjoyed every different chapter. I do think the V Friends thing has very substantial potential for me because I really love storytelling. It's why Gary V has done well. But this is a whole universe, so I'm genuinely excited about that. So what's the future of marketing? I think the future of marketing is the history of marketing, which is wherever the consumer's attention is, whoever understands where it is fastest and best and knows how to fill that attention with stories in video, written, or picture form will have the most upside, right? I mean, all that I'm doing right now with social media is what the pioneers of television did in the 1950s and 60s. That's all it is. The concept of debating would you rather be by yourself and your accountability versus being around humans or energy that are looking for eliminating accountability and you know friends that come with energy that is in the blame game versus yourself and you and your accountability. That's different than saying friends who are also reinforcing positivity and accountability is even better than you by yourself. But friends who are pushing envy, blame, and jealousy, that's what's happening. We are in scaled blame, envy, jealousy. The J-E-B, we've got to eliminate the J-E-B. The jealousy, envy, and blame, the J-E-B. You know where people struggle? Something can be true, but not have to destroy you. It can be true that you're being suppressed. It can be true that your boss is you. It could be true that your government you. It could be true that your boss is trying to undermine you, but it doesn't mean that it should ruin you. There isn't a human that's ever walked this earth that hasn't had negative energy against them. The question becomes, what do you do with it? I mean, look at the energy of the UAE. You can move here. You could. That's the accountability thing. Like, oh, my boss is me. Quit. Well, I can't. I have bills to pay, Gary. Get a different job. So instead of coming home and like venting for six hours, you could be on LinkedIn for three hours. That would set up your job. But a lot of people would rather go and get on Xbox or like call their mom or go to the bar and 
drink their worries away or eat their worries away or watch sports to distract them or whatever it is. It's easier. If my dad wasn't such a I wouldn't have no self-esteem to quit my job. Cool, but like, what are you gonna do that until you die? But think that's also fine. It's fine. Look, I'm all about a pity party. We all have to have them. Even I have pity parties in my own head once every decade. But if you have a party every day, it becomes boring, especially if it's a pity party. My big thing on this is this comes from a deep place of compassion and empathy and sympathy. This is not coming from a place of crudeness or no care. I just have not seen it ever work out in the concept of scale dwelling. I've just never seen it work out. It's not like you just dwell your way to happiness. You can't throw a pity party all the way and then miraculously the 80th day you're like, now I'm fixed. You're just digging a deeper grave. On the flip side, I've seen people completely and utterly transform with accountability. Like, like 37 years seeing the world one way, one year of pounding yourself with accountability and waking up and just, I've seen it a lot. Seven, 20, 30, 40 good times, which is amazing. Gives me enormous passion to keep doing it. Yeah, it's also like people don't know that they are doing it. Correct. By the way, every human being is doing things that they can't see in themselves. I like to pride myself in being incredibly self-aware. I think about it every day. It is the pillar that I speak on and I've done many things in the last decade where I wake up and I'm like, wait a minute. I didn't realize I wasn't being candorous for two decades and that it was causing me shortcomings and vulnerabilities. Yeah. I thought I was doing a good thing. Thought I was not hurting people's feelings and thought I was putting a lot of effort to making it good. I thought I was doing good. I'm not gonna hurt their feelings but we're still gonna get to a good outcome. At my own expense, but it's not as good. You know, for me to go through that, that was a hard revelation and so, yes, I understand your parents were alcoholics. Yes, I understand that there's sexism and racism and religious persecution. I understand all of that to be true. You can do something. People in North Korea can't do anything. They can escape North Korea. They can even do something. People try to escape the Soviet Union. People take little tiny boats from Cuba. People try to cross the border into South Korea. People risk their lives to change their outcome. I'm so glad you said that because, you know, it's not the same for everyone. It's not the same for all countries. It comes very triggering for people who can't actually just take your advices. They feel like you're not aware of the actual circumstances here. But when you say that, they feel included and they feel like, oh, okay, he's aware, this is great. Yeah, and I also never try to convince people that I'm aware or I'm never hurt by people not realizing how much I think about it because that's their reality. You know, I think the thing that people struggle with is they try to convince. I think what's making everything work for me and be sustainable is I'm not trying to convince. I'm really not. Even like in interviews when people are like, your advice, like I don't even think of it as advice. I genuinely don't. I think I'm just communicating and hoping. It's like a hope that it may trigger a different perspective shift. The other thing that's tough right now is back to pointing fingers versus accountability is people projecting things about people they don't know. They're like, you have it so good because you're rich. Like, oh, you're so lucky. Well, I don't believe you, Gary. I'm like, because you don't know me. You can't believe, I get that. You know, hard work is part of the equation. You could be born outrageously beautiful. If you don't go to the gym and if you don't have discipline in what you consume, you're not going to be able to be a model that makes money on brand deals. Like, it's just real life. The person doesn't exist that hasn't put hard work into the equation. It doesn't exist. That's something the world has to wrap its head around. Otherwise it's woe is me, I was born with this, I got unlucky. It's unbelievable how big dwelling has become cultural. It was like unheard of in the 90s. It's also hard to document the mundane. And even when you do, people don't believe it. I've documented my full days and people are like, this isn't true. In the comments, this is fake, how? How's it fake? I think there needs to be more responsibility on the consumer of her, not the producer of. I do think there's a huge responsibility to the producer of, it's why I don't show a lot of things. But again, I actually, on this subject matter, think it's another version of blame. Why don't we just all assume that everyone did put in work? I do. Huge game of accountability. But when I see anybody, I'm like, they worked. I think people are asking for something that they're not deploying. They want that person, that influence or whatever, to deploy empathy for them, yet they're not deploying empathy or compassion to that person, right? Show me your vulnerability. Cool, makes sense. But to me, why decide someone is perfect? When I literally look around the room, my brain goes into thinking about how many different things may be a struggle for them. Compassion, it's a very opposite view. It's so weird.